and welcome back to my channel. This is the 3D Print Geek and if you're into 3D printing, photography and drone, start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you won't miss anything. I'm gonna show you a 3D printer today. I'm talking about the Artillery 3D Hornet, which is right here, you probably have seen it. It's a really, really sexy printer and Artillery managed to, to get a really eye-pleasing printer without giving up to the quality that we are used on artillery 3D printers. Before jumping into the review, I would like to tell you about this collaboration I have ongoing with this Instagram page, it's called 3D Print All. This friend of mine, Giuseppe, runs this page. He talks about filament, he reviews 3D printers, he talks about application of electronics, to 3D printings and it's a great place to find inspiration and find some uh, ideas on what to print. All the links for your reference will be down in the description. As you just saw on the B-roll, unboxing experience as usual on Artillery 3D printer is really, really a great experience. I mean, uh, packaging is really, really well made. You can actually feel the quality of the printer by just grabbing the package. And when you start opening it, you see that it was put in with really, really uh, a lot of cure and uh, all the wrapping is done in a way in which the printer cannot be damaged in any way. It's assembled 99%, so we're talking about like six screws, couple of wires to plug in, bed leveling, and in a matter of 10 or 15 minutes, you're up and running and printing. So extremely easy to put together and a really, really amazing unboxing experience also for the little care that artillery puts into the uh, into the packaging and into delivering the final product as probably you already noticed it's a bowden extruder it's not a direct as the genius and the side winder and uh, we have this cable here that runs from the stepper motor to the hot end here and uh, it's uh, at the beginning I thought it was a really really great idea to run the PTF tube and the electric wires inside the same the same tube. Then I saw a couple of uh, YouTubers uh, talking about issues that could run if you have a clog and uh, you need to clean it and you need to unplug this and unplugging this would mean not have power. To power it so I try to understand how to fix it and I think I came out with uh, with a solution also talking to artillery and getting their advice on how this problem can be fixed and here is what we figured out the PTFE tube inside the cable assembly is not reaching the hot end and there's another short piece of PTFE tube inside the heat brake with this design, when a clog happens, it could happen inside the short piece of the PTFE tube or between the two PTFT tubes. You can simply undo the connector on the hot end side and cut the clogged piece of filament away if later this happens. And if it was not between the two PTF tube, it usually means you could unload the filament from the machine and the clog could be inside the short piece of PTFP tube. After unloading, you may remove the three screws holding the hot end onto the carriage for easier operation with the cable connected. Then you can easily access the hot end to perform operation needed. 
including replacing the short piece of PTFE tube. Now let's run through some little specs on this printer. Uh, bed is 220 by 220 by 250 as a standard desktop uh, 3D printer volume. Really, really, really decent. It has a filament runout sensor. It has um, a bed. It's, there's no automatic bed leveling, but it's uh, like putting it together and bed leveling. It's really, really easy. It has two different kind of leveling, just the four corners, or you actually have. Uh, um, six point, uh, six, nine point bed leveling, which works really, really, really nice. Um, you can bring G codes inside this printer with an SD card, and uh, the let's say the display is not as pretty as uh, as it was on Genius and Sidewinder. Uh, they use the classical knob as you see on the Ender. Uh, and their three series printers and which works really really fine I mean no particular issue you have um, <coughs> uh, Y and X axis uh, uh, tensioner which is really really good and this sexy line of printer makes it like really really nice and appealing for any desktop setup and any studio I mean this yellow is at the beginning is a punch in the eye, but then you can uh, recognize a little bit of style. I like calling it the Lamborghini of the 3D printers, my, my small Lamborghini. And I was actually surprised by the quality of the prints that came out. I was not expecting that level of quality from a Bowden, even though we're talking about artillery and we're talking about a really, really entry level 3D printer. All the links to buy the Artillery Hornet will be down in the description for your reference. So, how does the Hornet print? Does it print fine? I mean, judge yourself. This is totally empty Matterhacker filament, just 5% infill on the shoes because I needed this bridge to be filled up. Really easy to do in Cura, probably. A small short tutorial will come soon. So result is pretty pretty amazing. This is a 200 or 300 scaled up matter hacker filament. Then one of the first prints I've done was was this. I printed out this because something really really weird on this printer is that the Z. Uh, gear on the back is upside down and is basically fluctuating in the air so the motor is up here and not down there that means it's the opposite of a regular uh, 3d printer when I put it together I thought there was a mistake and it was pre-assembled badly but then I realized that that probably is a way to avoid Z wobble to happen on, on, on the top. And this I printed out to see if I was correct. And as you can see, there actually is no Z wobble. And I nearly almost got to the to the 25 centimeters. This is 20, I think, 22, I think. So I nearly got to the maximum uh, height that you could print and still no sign of Z wobble. So probably artillery got this right as well. And that kind of gear upside down really, really works well. Of course, I did lots of sample prints. I did this minion, no support, using the green Perla from Azure Film, which is really, really nice and bright. I really like this green. The other one was Red Perla, same from Azure Film. I printed out this lion, probably the, the one of you who follow me also on Instagram have seen the reel I've done of this print, which was really, really nice. Turned out really, really well. Then I went, wanted to do something with more detail and see how this uh, succulent planter would come out 
and this was printed in base mold guys eh? which is even more astonishing than a regular print this looks really really amazing I mean it's a reliable printer I was not expecting for just setting it up and I, I mean I'm spoiled with the genius and the sidewinder I throw a print I usually use standard uh, settings and don't bother I mean it will print perfectly but I, I thought I had to put more cure on the on the Hornet but I was mistaken I mean they they all came out all the prints came out beautifully the same way that would come on Genius. So it's even hard for me to find the difference between this and the Genius. I mean, this is even even like sexier. I mean, it's even prettier and, you know, it stays there on your desk and it's a piece of furniture, even though it's a, a reliable 3D printer. What I wanted to test at last was this pyramid here. Hope we can focus which is a great model i found i hadn't seen this before otherwise i would have printed it and i tried to print it this is one uh, scale one one and i wanted to do it a little bit bigger probably you can already see it over here and this is scaled three times it's 300 scale and guys now it's yellow because I was testing this filament and but it's a piece of art so I mean the designer of this model I mean I'm gonna make sure to leave a link in the description to this file because this is one of the most beautiful STL files that I've seen on Thingiverse since I started 3D printing. I mean, I really, really love it. And this was printed in base mode, believe it or not. This is base mode. And it's beautiful. And the result, it took 24 hours. It's not a, um, a pretty fast printer. I mean, setting is set to 60. So I think it's more or less the same speed and the same, uh, you know, same settings of, a, of an artillery genius. But like, I mean, it's a printer you can rely on. Uh, at the moment, it's even cheaper than buying an artillery genius. Uh, it's on the market and it's a great printer for a beginner. It's something that I would suggest if you want to get close to 3D printing and don't want to spend much, this printer is going to kill the entire market of the Bowden entry-level printers i mean it's beautiful it's pretty and it's reliable i mean it works perfectly and you have artillery support in case of any any problems which was tested and tested by many people also some of my followers reached out to artillery for insur european insurance and they were really really satisfied by the the customer service it works really really good so you buying uh, a product that will have customer support for its entire life so getting back to this printer would i suggest this printer i would definitely suggest this printer i think that this printer will be uh will be a killer of all the entry-level 3d printers i don't want to make any names or comparison you know what i'm talking about the 200 around the 200 euros 200 dollars entry-level Bowden 3d printers this artillery hornet will kill them just not because of the of the appealing uh, and sexiness of the printer but also for the quality and uh, reliability i mean it's a, a reliable printer and uh, i have nothing else to say i mean i was surprised by the quality that this printer delivered that was all for today guys i really hope you enjoyed this short introduction to this uh, 3d printer smash the like button if you did like the video subscribe if it's something you're into and i'll see you guys on the next video